you know, it is election season or it is we're heading into election season. And this has, of course, been a big challenge for platforms like Meta. Uh, in light of the learnings of the past, uh, is there anything that, you know, we will see you do different this time around? Well, we have a, a whole um, host of programming and work that we do around elections to ensure in, you know, integrity and safety during those time periods. In particular, I don't work on this specifically, but in particular my team does work on the safety of um, women public figures during, during elections. And we have special programming and training that we do to ensure that women uh, public figures are able and candidates are able to maintain their safety um, during the course course of an election. You know, you talked about uh, online safety for women, and I know that as part of the Digital Suraksha campaign, you're also working with law enforcement uh, in India particularly. Uh, again, is there is there anything specific that you see here in India with respect to uh, the, the kind of reactions that we see specifically for women and how, uh, you know, Meta, for instance, has been able to deal with some of that? Well, I'm actually going to talk to you one of the things that I've seen in India, both in my last visit and in, in this visit, that I think is extraordinarily um, exciting and promising, and that is the, the um, development of the creator community. Mm -hmm. And they're not only engaging in terms of creating great content for people to see and to be engaged with, but they're really involved in a lot of the safety work that we do, whether that's through promoting anti-bullying campaigns or we had a particular effort with um, with creator uh, with a, uh, cre a Bollywood creator and star in relation to uh, child safety and child exploitation, and we see this opportunity and real creativity in India around these kinds of issues. Um, you know, as as you look at the way that we're seeing these platforms grow and the kind of reach that you enjoy. Um, what are the specific challenges that you, you, know, you believe that you need to deal with today in the context of uh, the, the kind of sort of messaging that you want to send out, but also the way that the platform is being used by different constituencies uh, in being able to, at this point in time, for instance, in India, you're not liable for the content that's posted by uh, people on the platform, but that could change if the new digital act comes into play. So how are you gearing yourself up from a regulatory perspective uh, in light of the, the proposed changes? Well, I think, you know, we have long um, felt that it was important for industry standards to be developed. We haven't waited for them. We've tried to develop tools and safety and policies to ensure that we are providing a safe experience, regardless of where uh, the, legislation, the legislation goes. We're also really trying to co-design those safety efforts with our users. So that's in the context of creators, it's in the context of the people who use our platform. And I feel confident that we share the same goals as, as policymakers. We want people to feel safe on our platform. People won't engage, people won't use, use our platform or use our apps if they don't feel safe. And so we really, it, this is really a matter of kind of coming together now to align on, on the approach and I think we'll get there. But there is also this sort of challenge between the anonymity that some people want to continue to enjoy on platforms and the need for verification and identification. Uh, so as a platform, uh, you know, how, how much of a burden is that at this point in time to, to walk that fine line and walk that balance? Well, I think we've we've been able to do it do it pretty well. I mean, I, on our platforms, we we can, there's information that we can know in the background about a user that they that they share that they share with us, and then there there is you know we don't I don't know that we we really have the kind of anonymity that you would typically that people typically associate with parts of the parts of the internet. We try to encourage people to have a, an authentic experience and to behave authentically on our on our platform. We do a lot in the background to identify people who are not engaging authentically who are either impersonating or have fake accounts and so that's how we try to control to control that area and, and try to ensure that we have the authentic experience where you know who it is that you're engaging with. Mm -hmm. You know, one of course is the issue of uh, regulators or governments uh, telling you to take something down and there have been takedown requests that, and we've seen that number go up considerably. But preemptive action, you know, uh, give me an anecdote of how 
Meta is responding to this preemptively, responding to uh, what you may see as, as uh, misinformation, fake news, bullying, uh, you know, online harassment, for instance. Well, this goes back actually to when you were talking about talking about AI. So we have policies. You're not allowed to violate our policies. They're open and stated on, on our on our platform, and they cover exactly the content that you're talking about: bullying content, um, hate speech, misinformation, and and other. Uh, other types of content and we then use AI that can identify that content before um, and, and move it before people report it to us we have a transparency report because it's important for people to know that if we say that we're taking down this content that they understand what we're taking down and how much of it we're taking down and how effective we are and to give you an example we have content let's say say um, uh, bullying and harassment content or hate speech content or child exploitation content for that matter. We have a transparency report that, that shows how much content we take down in that particular area as well as the percentage of it that we get before it's been reported to us. And across most of the areas that we report on, we're 90% of the time or, or more catching that content before it's reported to us. Uh, and are you seeing that in India it's different, where you are seeing a higher percentage of takedown requests coming in to you? I don't know the number of takedown request, requests in comparison in comparison to to other to other countries. I apologize for not knowing that. But we also, on, on the and the context of takedown requests, is slightly different than what I was talking about. We have transparency around that as well, so that people are made aware of the takedown requests that we're getting, so that they understand what is the government asking us to take down and, and what are we doing in response to that. You know, uh, India is not just your largest user market, it's also an important strategic market for you from, as you pointed out, an incubation perspective where you're incubating ideas uh, and also testing uh, some of your new solutions. So, so what's, uh, what's on the anvil at this point in time? Uh, you talked about Reels and you talked about some of the other solutions that you test, uh, tested here in the Indian market. What, what are you prioritizing at this point? Well, I think we're, we're quite focused on the creator community. Uh, India has an incredibly active creator community and we've seen them use reels to to great to great effect i you know i mentioned to you that i was here earlier in less well it's not earlier in this year it was last year but it was within the last 12 months I, i've been here um, earlier and when, when i was here i in, was sat down and had a conversation with creators and one of the things that came across to create it from creators was that they needed some additional tools. They focused a lot at the time on being able to balance their life as a creator with some of their life that was outside of, their, of the work that they were doing as a creator and finding a way to be able to have that time balance. And since that time from when I, when I came into now, we have a new tool called the scheduling tool that was developed in response to that kind of feedback that we had gotten from creators. So we do look to India first in this area. And as you pointed out, this is not your first visit to India, it's your sixth visit. How yes. have you say, seen this market change? You talked about the creator economy and it's, it's grown significantly. But what are some of the other insights uh, over the last uh, you know, six visits that you've done here in India that, that you know, that has, uh, to your mind, given you a sense of how much things have changed here? Well, one of the things that, that I've seen that's, that I'm really excited about on a, on a personal level is growth in the um, number of active women on our, on our platform and the activity there. I remember when I first came to India, there was a lot of conversation from the women that I was meeting with around safety. And not that women's safety isn't an issue, it's always an issue, it's still an issue now. But at the time, there was, that seemed to be impacting people's, women's interests in being on our platform. That seems to have really changed. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I met with the minister earlier today, and I had heard her say last night on the news, 400 million women are active, uh, fiscally active contributing members of, of India's, uh, India's economy. And a lot of that is through small businesses, mm -hmm. and our platform is playing a role in that, in, in women being able to develop their small businesses and bring them forward, and women being a part of the creator community. So that, to me, is one of the most exciting things that I've seen, mm -hmm. is the extraordinary activity of women on our platform here in India. Well, that, that's good to hear, and uh, it's good to know that more women are actively participating in the economy through using, using uh, digital technology as well. Uh, 
you, you've had quite the India visit this time around, haven't you? I, I have. <laughs> Curtis, well, courtesy I, I, lost baggage. <laughs> courtesy lost baggage, but you know what? But you've experienced the Make in India story for yourself firsthand. <laughs> yes, it was, I mean, it was really quite incredible. I arrived at 10 o'clock, I found out I didn't have my luggage. By 10.30, they had me in a store that had opened up specifically because I, I, for me. They took all my measurements, and by 7 a.m. this morning, I had a suit. I mean, only in India, only in India. <laughs> it's a nation of problem solving. Well, uh, problem solving and making in India experience firsthand. And Tegni, thanks so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, we wish you the very best for the rest of your trip, and we hope you get your bags back as well. Me too, me but too. good to speak to you, and thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having well, me. That's it then on this edition of the Global Dialogue. We'll see you again next week. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye, and many thanks for watching. Let's you and